come up, the name Africa, what comes into your mind? Well, I just see nothing but a beautiful continent full of opportunities that are not tapped. That's what I see when I see Africa everywhere I go. It's just opportunities and opportunities in various forms, various shapes, various colors that are waiting to be tapped. Do you think Africans can make it in Africa? Yes, of course we can. If we don't make it, where else can we make it? This is our comfort zone. We have all the resources. I mentioned earlier on that up to 60% of farmable, 62% of farmable area in the world today is in Africa, both aqua and crops. So there's no better place to 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 be right now than to be in Africa. This is my home grounds, and I know that when you play at home, you score more goals. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to Flossel. You know, I want to tell you something. Thank you so much for being an African, not an African. Thank you. You're doing something that a lot of Africans think that it's impossible. You've done it. And, and on behalf of all Africans, we want to tell you, are you cool? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what it is, man. How do you feel knowing that you have the biggest tilapia farm in the entire Ghana? I mean, indigenous farm, right? Like, Yes, 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 the indigenous. Yeah. Yes, uh, because there are some boys bigger than me, but they are not indigenous. So we are, the we're, largest, we're, we are the largest indigenous, um, everything built from scratch. Um, global resources, local resources, cooked in one bowl to give it to Latvia. Yeah. Wow. I really want to know what makes your farm the biggest farm in Ghana? We are very humble to actually be occupying that position in the first place. Mm. Um, but we, we, our principle is like producing a local solution, local for local people. So we bring the um, best materials you can find around okay. together and we combine them. Best materials in terms of fish feed, in terms of human resources. And you can see here that we have very good brains and they are all local materials. Mm. We don't have expatriate and stuff. Though they are equally good, but we believe more in building the capacity of our people to rub shoulders with those things. And we try to get the best. Uh, experienced people in the industry. If we find one anywhere, we will bring them here. We brought people from all kinds of places, we have no idea, to come and interact with our team, to come and share knowledge. We've done classroom sessions and stuff and do knowledge transfer so that we can enhance the capacity of, of our, our team so they can compete at any level. And then that gives us a lot of mileage in terms of output and achievement. I can't wait to show what you've done to the entire world, but I'm that guy who is on a journey to celebrate African excellence, and I'm here to celebrate you today. Thank I just you. want you to tell me who you are, where it all started, and I mean, tell me something about you. All right, my name is Evans, Evans okay. Kojo Danso, Selassie, mm. and um, my middle name is Selassie. The name Flossel is a coin name that we put together my, my, my name is Elisi and my wife's name is Florence, so we decided to put a, the, the flow starting first. It's actually deliberate and then oh. the Salah come in, okay. so we have flow cell out of that. Uh, and yes, at the whole thing was her idea, Florence's idea to start this um, aquaculture thing and she was the first person in the family to take a course in aquaculture. In her family? No, in, in our family to, to take a course in aquaculture at the Water Research Institute. I think by then I was in Switzerland or something. Hey, I want to take a course in aquaculture. I saw it in the Daily Graphic and I think it's nice. Let's consider it. I said, okay, when I come back, we, we, we do it. And so that's why her name has so, to come So, no, you know what? Behind every successful man, there is, there is a woman, yeah? That story represents his story. Not all women, sorry. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? 
tell me something about yourself. Were you born and raised in here? Yes, sir. 100% homegrown solution. Uh, my dad is an Achimi. My mom is an Elwe. Uh, I grew up in the co coastal area at Aflau. Uh. And so I've been seeing fish from from the beginning of my life. Sometimes we followed our uncles to the beachside to drag nets. Is it uh, from a rich background? Uh, no, not entirely. If I tell you how I went to university, you would not like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, tell us, tell us something. How, how, how did you go to university? Was it, was it a tough life? Yeah, it was really a tough life. My mom was my everything. My mom, my, my, sorry to say, my dad was never there. I come from one of such families where your dad is never there, you know. And I'm sure you find one everywhere. So, so my mom was everything. It got really challenging at the point. I remember in third year, I had to go and write to the school to say I might not be able to finish the course so oh. I want to go and find some job to do maybe when I make money I'll come back in the final year and then my mom said no we, we can she put up her property to sell nobody was buying so I remember she had to go trace one of my uncles somewhere in northern part of Togo who lent her some money and then I was already on the bus to Kumasi I went to Kenya University to to go and submit my letter that I will have to put my course on the post mm. and then she followed me all the way in it by the time we got to uh, Accra to change buses I said oh that's my mom what are you doing here I left you at home say, yes and then she gave me a hug and said no nah, nah, we are not going to do this you are going to finish your school and she Whoa. handed me the envelope so I had to go to the school to go and, and pay and then later on came back to pack my stuff and continue my school because of this i just want to say if you're a mother watching this video god bless you and be like his mother thank you and thank you, sir. after school did you ever live abroad yeah after school i right after uni i joined nestle uh, for my national service and uh, they say hard work pays and that's I, I really, really attest to that. I'm a good example, a testimony of that hard work hmm. based phrase. When I was doing my service with Nestle, uh, I was staying with one of my uncles in a shaman, and uh, he's late now, may he so rest in peace. Uh, there were some challenges at home, so I could not come back home in time to meet those challenges because mm. I would not be able to sleep at night mm. because of the challenges. So I would stay as long as possible at the workplace. And, and so I will, I will close with the afternoon by 10, 11 p.m. And so I will stay when there were issues related to products, especially next week and next cafe I was in charge of. I will fix those things. And so April management was, was, was observing, was taking note of all those things. And um, I remember one time there was very heavy consumer complaints with one of our products that we, we produced only for the French market, Cameroon, Senegal and mm. France. It's called mm. Nesquik. Mm. Uh, so when we mix the product, it will separate. So some parts of the product will be sweet, some parts will be bitter and so on. So I was put on, they were looking for somebody to fix that. And so my boss recommended me that this guy can work on that. And uh, I spent three days in the lab to work on that. That was around May 2000 and, and uh, no, April 2004. Mm. Yes, 2000 and, no, 2005, because I finished with 2004. So April, I was on that project. And by the time I presented to management and they tested it, everything was okay. They asked me to go to the production line because the first was in the lab. So we did it in, in the, on the production line. It did work. And then the following day, they called me up and gave me an offer. So I never finished my national service. My national service was for only four months. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so. And that's how you found yourself working for yeah, yes. Yeah. And how did you work for, how long did you work for them? Ten years. Ten years? Yes. Yeah. 2004 to 2000. And, and after 10 years, what happened? This has nothing to do with <laughs> mixing Milo and mixing coffee so, together. So I remember when I told my boss that I wanted to quit. He, I didn't give my resignation letter to him directly. I gave it to the HR. To the HR. So the HR informed him, hey, Evans is leaving. So he was at the head of his... He had, he called, Evans, what am I hearing? I said, so what are you hearing? Everyone's tell me what am I hearing? I said, can we talk about it when you come to the office? And you know why I was when he called? I was at my farm. <laughs> when he called, that call came. What am I hearing? Is it true or not? Is it is an Arab? Is it true or not that you have resigned? I said, sir, it is true, but I prefer to discuss it when you come. He got very angry. Then I knew that the man would go. I gave the move, so I had to leave the farm. Then I was farming at the Wenya. And quickly left the farm, got to the office before him. First thing as usual, he called me to his office, we have to talk. I said, yes, sir. Why are you leaving? How much is Coca-Cola paying you? How much is the Azure Guinness paying you? How much is that? I said, sir, it's not about money. You should know by now. I work 
here for 10 years and you know I'm not cash driven. Yes, everybody likes money, but the passion, you know it already. So yeah, so what, what are you going to miss? I'm still going to farm. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. From what? From fish. No way! This is not what we prepared you for. This is not what we've trained you for. We have a development plan. We have this, we've that, and you've gone through it. You're in the middle of it. Why do you want to quit now? Does it mean that when you were working for Nestle, mm -hmm. you are still farming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, I had a, the fish farm. In, in where? In, there was at, at the way, yeah. We started a farm from my house in Pram Pram. After Florence did the first training in Napa Kocha at Adek, we made two ponds in my house in Pram Pram. Oh, okay. So we went, I remember we went to uh, uh, the ministry's uh, hatchery in Ashaiman to get about 600 fingerlings. That was the first fingerlings I ever bought in my life. Wow. And we put it in the pond. I, we didn't know how to handle Nobody trained us. We took it to the house. By the time we got home, we had lost half. So we, we kept the, the rest in the... <laughs> we kept the rest in the pond. And then, <laughs> let me know, yeah. You know, something must inspire. Apart from yeah, the fact yeah, yeah. that your wife mm -hmm. learned aquaculture, what really yeah. inspired you? What drove you to enter into aquaculture then? Yeah. I mentioned earlier on that... Um, when the industry started, it was completely foreign operators dominated. So one time, Florence and I drove all the way to. Ish I won't mention the name of the farm. Don't worry. Uh, at at uh, Akuse to buy fish. Okay. To buy a fish, and the gentleman would not. We drove all the way. The guy would not sell fish to us. And those days, Tilapia was very scared. He said, "No, no, no. You have to get an appointment. You have to get a number. And when you you, get, you need two weeks for that. And when you get a number, and you can base on that number, you be surprised. This is fish. It's supposed to be and fish needs appointment. Yeah, and we were not served. We were not served. You are laughing. You know, you're former boss. Uh? And and when <laughs> when we drove back, this is the painful aspect. Driving back because I was so furious. By the time we got to Shah Hills or whatever, my car broke down. And I checked the engine was off." And so I was like, nah, this has to start something. He said, so, so I told him the story. One day he came here to get fingerlings. He came here. The, the, the man oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, made yeah. you start this yeah, came yeah. here. He for didn't finger. know he made me start. He didn't know. So, but I told him, I told him that uh, the first day he was here to get fingerlings himself. I told him, okay, you remember this, you remember this. I said, no, no, no. I said, okay, yeah, this is what you do. And there's another interesting one also, I'll tell you. And then, when I was making the inquiries, gathering my data on the feasibility to yeah. start the farming, yeah. I was with uh, Run and Fish Feed. Mm. I went to their office and I, they had a sales manager by then, quite a Belgian guy, technical mm. guy. I went to his office, hey, I want to start fish farm. Nice, not the first question you asked me. How much money do you have? I said, okay. I was then an employee. 10,000 cities. To me, 10,000 cities was a lot of money. money. Six, seven years ago. Oh, 10,000 cities. That's not enough money for fish. What are you talking about? I say yes. Then he removed his glasses like this. I tell you what to do with ten thousand. Okay. Do you know Afienya Junction? I said yes. Yeah. Between Afienya Junction and Prampan Junction, there's a big gutter there. Uh, so we can use part of the money and block this part of the gutter and block that part of the gutter and then put some fish in there. Then you can do something. That's the gutter. That's it was very sarcastic, actually. And, and each time I meet him, I tell you, I, I refer him to that all the time. He comes here to convince us to buy his fish feed and do this, why don't you do this, why don't you? And I, I keep referring him to that. You remember when you told me to go and block the gutter and put fingerlings in because I only had 10,000 to farm, to farm fish. That was the first advice I was given. <laughs> and through this, you've been able to build yeah, 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 yeah. one of the biggest yeah, yeah. in the entire yeah, country. Yeah. I, I don't know if I should ask you, keep working with me, I don't know if I should ask you this. Is your farm bigger than his farm right now? Oh, in terms of capacity, we are a lot bigger. A lot bigger. <laughs> this is the success stories that I normally want to hear so that this kind of stories will inspire you that you don't give up. I mean, the person who told me that work hard, when I wanted to start a YouTube channel, the person who told me to work hard, I, I wanted support from him. He said, no, I can't support you. Work hard, you'll get there. I can divide my subscribers into one million, you still have one. You know? ah. <laughs> so I, I love your story, but I mean, where are we right now? So we are at the, the, the hatchery site, mm. uh, the site we saw before the, uh, the back with the, the ponds um, buried in the ground. The, that's the, uh, where we do the, the breeding, that's the breeding station. Okay. So in every of those ponds, we have about, uh, 250 females and about 75 or 90 males. 
we pay them in a ratio of three is to one. Okay. And three, uh, so every so every meal has three wives or three females if you want. Can we apply that to real life? <laughs> <laughs> it depends oh, on your, your, your faith. That would be good system. though. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Okay, like I mean, two. like what am I? You pay me with? Is it eight or seven? We can do seven actually. Ah, thank God! <laughs> Can't wait to be a fish. Can we pay him in one of our farms? <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to be a fish someday. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, a lot, it's, it's also a lot of work. Eh? Uh, yeah. It's, it's a lot of work for the poor fish. Because mm. if you go high like that and you see the meal after, you realize that they are a lot stressed. Oh. Uh, so that's why you, you have to meet their nutritional requirements. Ah. It's a lot of work. It's not only for the fun aspect. Eh? Yeah, I won't, I won't be stressed. <laughs> don't, don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Is this the main fish for? Um, these are holding areas for uh, breeders and that we use for breeders here. Yeah. Okay. So in between the building activities, so we keep them here briefly uh, so we can condition them. Okay. What, what stage is this? Okay, so this is the fingerling stage. Okay. This is also the fingerling so stage. The fingerling stage. You are seeing the fingerling stage, but a much more advanced one. Okay, so what you saw over there um, was the post fry stage. Most of them were in the post fry stage. Okay. So when they hit the post fry stage, that is between 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 grams, they bring them here okay. and then re raise them to about 2 to 3 grams. Okay, so it's at that point that they are nearing the juvenile stage. Okay. You did all this by yourself? Uh, yes, not only by myself. Thank mm. you very much. Uh, there's a flow in the flow cell. The lady behind the whole vision, the whole dream. And uh, there is a good team behind as well. Mm. I have a very good team of, uh, of workers who support to make this project uh, as successful as it is today. I think it's because of you, your wife, and the family. That's why Kwame Nkrumah said a black man is capable of managing his own affairs. I mean, things like this in Africa, when we see things like this, we don't attribute it to a black man. You've done it. And that is why I wish I can open my jacket and I say that you are an African, not an African. Thank you. How many cages do you have in here? We have 38 cages in total. Each cage has the capacity to do 30 tons. 30 tons, yes. so does it mean, I want to know how many fishes are in there? Each cage has a production capacity uh, of uh, 120,000, but we pack operationally between 60 and 80,000 fish per cage. And how often do you harvest? Every week, every week. We try to put fish on your table every week. And during harvesting, how many tons do you harvest in, uh, the, in a week? Uh, in a week, three to four tons. Three to four tons every week. And uh, that's about 3,000 to 8,000 fish there about every week. Sorry, we just had an accident. Sorry, but it's all right. It's See, right. I, I just want to know, yeah, with, with 3,000 tons, how much will you sell it? A ton goes for 15,000. You want to count our numbers? Yeah, it's okay. This guy is a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen, listen. Agriculture is the future. I, yeah, I wanted yeah. to ask you this question, but I think the question has already been answered. Yeah, I think the, the head of the African Development Bank made that statement very boldly that if you want to be a billionaire in the future, the sector to look at is agriculture. But this is the I mean, sector that so many youth of Africa don't want to involve themselves into. Uh, yes, that used to be very uh, so much the case a couple of years ago. But I've seen in the more recent times some some uh, young men making moves such as this. Cause you know it's got to be based on your passion. And these days there are appropriate technologies that you can uh, you can you can introduce to your business. And you know the youth of today are more tech driven than mm. you know so many years ago. So yeah. uh, we have solutions where. Uh, we can even have drones in the water to check the fish, their weight, their feeding and everything. And this all attracts the youth. We can have uh, the snooker diving stuff that also attract the youth. So it depends on how it's packaged and how it is structured. You can attract 
um, they use, most of them don't know. So it's a very no. good stuff you are doing by putting this story out there. Then they can see the possibility in it and then they can come back home for us to venture. My, my friends of... normally tells me that, you know what, we want lucrative business. Is this lucrative by the way? It is lucrative. Every business is as lucrative as you want it to be. After hearing you, because I'm a mathematician, yeah? Okay. So I just want to say that, would you say that fish farming is equal to gold mining? Probably even better. Oh my goodness. See, I, I, have to bleed, to bleed I, I, the I'm starting anyway. fish farming tomorrow. <laughs> I'm starting You're welcome, my brother. Thank you. But I have fingerlings for you. Oh, thank you so much. But this is, comes to my next question. There are so many young Africans that want to invest in this. I mean, would you say that it's more expensive, I mean, capital intensive when you are starting? Uh, yes, it is. There are two, three, uh, two or three key pillars. Mm. The quality of the knowledge with which you go into it is okay. very important. Mm -hmm. The technology you want to go with and then the, the workforce. Those are the three things. So you need to have the right knowledge, uh, which includes knowing which species of fish to work with. Mm. You know, it, it, not uh, one size doesn't fit, fit anyone, everyone. So uh, maybe tilapia is good for us because of the environment, but if someone's environment will require something like um, clarias or catfish or adrin. So you need to look at it properly before you tailor your solutions into it. So yes, one size doesn't fit all, but then you need the right knowledge, right network, right technology, and then you are good to go. How much will you say it's okay to start up? Um, I mean, you have done it, yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you started yeah. from your backyard. Yeah. Yes, I mean, yeah. how much did you invest in it? Because right now it looks so big and people just felt yeah. like you just wake up and started something like No, no, no. How much money did you like invest this. from day one? Uh, from day one we started with about 15 or 16,000 CDs and then uh, another 50,000 went in and then today we talk about an investment close to 8 million Ghana CDs in six years. <laughs> This year, I really want to show my audience how to fish. I, I, I'm not saying that you just have to be a fish farmer or you need to start a catfish, but I want to go into details, yeah? How much do you have to invest? And what do you think is the profit margin? Okay, so let's say we take a base of a base of 1,000 fish. Okay. Uh, for you to be able to uh, produce 1,000 pieces of fish at half a kilo mm -hmm. each or even 300 grams the size of my palm so this 1,000 fish uh, will give you close to 300 uh, uh, kilos or 350 kilos like this uh, you will require uh, close to 65% of your cost is going to go into the feeding whoa close to 65% of your cost is going to go into the feeding and then uh, the rest is going to be labor, infrastructure and operational expenses, the cost of the logistics and stuff and then if we are able to do that and if you have good healthy fish from good source mm -hmm. uh, you can be sure to make margins between 30 and 50% on your returns. Wow. If you follow the good practices, no shortcuts, just like every business, huh? no shortcuts. What type of, uh, what method of fish farming are you using in here? We, we, we combine quite many techniques. Mm -hmm. on, on this side, the grower side is completely cage culture system. Mm -hmm. On the hatchery and the nursery is spawn system. And who built this? All these cages were built by Flossel, built by ourselves. You we, went, you, you, and you were in Nestle for 10 years, man. Oh, yes, they yes, yes. They yes, don't that's teach that's you how to build no, caves, no, man. No, no, no. I, I didn't do fish in school. I, I didn't do fish in yeah, school. Nothing at all. to do with fish. No, no, no. It was just based on fashion. My first degree was on uh, was in biochemistry, so I came out as a scientist, and then later on I did a, a second degree in project management, and then another one in finance. And another one in finance. So this was just based on what I love to do, what I want to do, what I want to spend my time playing and doing business at the same time, like combining hmm. hobby with business. So which means that you brought the locals together? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I, uh, the, the unique thing here is how we are able to blend both the local solutions with the, the important solutions, including knowledge, and we put all together and, um, and to, to develop this, this business. And not to mention the support systems that we have, mm -hmm. we work with two to three key main institutions in terms of knowledge transfer. Okay. Um, we have the WISH, the American Soya Bean Association. They have a, um, one section called the World Initiative of Soya in Human Health. 
uh, they have a group of consultants they bring to us from Auburn University, the people who have 30, 40 years experience in aquaculture. Okay. They are able to bring them here and they spend time with my staff and myself and training us. Sometimes they fly my team to the university in Alabama and they go through intensive okay. training. And then we also have the Dutch embassy, they have what we call the POOM. The senior expert network, which I encourage every entrepreneur to, to tap into, it's free knowledge. They can, they can, they can resource your business with uh, for about a week. People who have 30, 40 years experience in business management, advanced senior experts, you know, and they can spend time to shape the mindset of your people and train them and stuff. This is for free. You don't pay anything. And so these are all uh, solutions that I advise young entrepreneurs. Uh, that if you venture into whatever kind of business, they have big pool of consultants. You yeah. know, just speak to them; they they will they will ask which area your expertise you require is in, and then they will give you the right person to help. You. What are you doing to transfer the knowledge that you have right now to the youth of Africa who are looking forward to start uh, tilapia farming? Uh, we love to train a lot. We love to share our experience. Uh, a typical example is what we did in October. For the first time, we had participants from 11 countries here in our farm. We had them for two weeks. It was sponsored by the, the Soya Bean Association. And then we took them through intensive aquaculture, mm. through the hatchery, through the nursery, through the cage, and there was some classroom work. And they all went back to their countries and we keep receiving good testimonies. Next week, there will be another delegation from Nigeria, about 12 of them, mm. uh, aquaculture operators. They will spend a week here with us trying to learn more about our technique. So yeah, and and, and um, we, we and, and with the various universities as well, because that's where um, the, the hub of breeding this young people you know? uh, uh, we have uh, an MOU with the University of Science and Technology and with the University of Cape Coast as well and we just are in discussion with Legon for the same now so they keep sending their students to us for internships uh, ranging from one month to three months wow. and we even have people up to the PhD level uh, for their practical work it's our way of giving back to the community and encouraging young people to say hey guys uh, there's something else we can do. And through that, we even picked some good, good ones that we have employed. Finally brought the fishes to the shores and I, I want to know why is it that you have to bring the fishes in here? People are gonna buy it? Uh, yeah, we are going to sort them into various sizes, various categories according to um, how big you are or the weight. So, and uh, and different sizes attract different prizes. Oh, so that's what's gonna be done here. After seeing all this process, I feel like you make hard things look easier. Wait, it's making it possible to work. Yeah. Oh, okay. Making it possible. And you're back. Keep calm and eat tilapia. I'll eat tilapia before I get I get out of here. But I want to know what is the major challenge of um, having a, a tilapia farm? The major challenge that you face. Two main challenges: financing the feeding is quite challenging, okay. or the conversion process, you know, mm. and then also fish health. Mm. We've had major challenges of fish health in the past. Majority of that has been resolved now. So the biggest challenge on the desk now is financing the, the conversion process, the feeding process. Do you think the system in Africa helps African entrepreneurs? It is very hard to have entrepreneurship success in, in Africa. You, what? you need balls. What? Why is it so? Oh, systems don't work. Systems don't work. You see a lot of discrimination sometimes, if, especially against indigenous support systems are very difficult. Huh? Sometimes you'd be surprised that there are solutions that are out there, but having access to them is very difficult. You know, it's not it's not very easy. Like for example, I have colleagues who started similar projects in China. And we have very smooth support, and you see their project a lot miles ahead of you. And the difference is only in the support systems. 
for yeah, that. So, so succeeding in Africa is very difficult in terms of entrepreneurship. That's not to say it's not possible. It is very possible to do, but you, you need balls. You need you, you need to have some bead of patience. You need to be able to take some big, big steps. If you had the chance to change something in Africa, what would it be? I'll create more entrepreneurs in Africa. I create more young business people in Africa so that they can become prosperous and it's only prosperity that we can drive poverty out, not, not, not excessive jobs. You are, you are young, you've done it. There's so many young Africans watching us right now. What will be your final message to them? Hey guys, come home, let's do this. We can make it possible. Whatever area of that interests you, whether it's aquaculture, any other business, uh, if we push hard enough, we can turn this around and make our continent a better place because it is possible and we can make it possible. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate your time. Where can we reach out to you? Uh, yes, um, our website is www.flusofarms.com. Uh, our WhatsApp number is plus two three three two four four eight eight nine five eight four. And then you can reach us on Facebook as well. Just look for the word Flossel and then you will find Flossel Farms and you will find us. And we look forward to hearing uh, from you. Ask us about our fish, ask us about our process, ask us about how you want we can do it. And we are willing to share experiences with you. I want to say thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and be part of the Million family. And I'll see you all in the next one.